Hello everybody, this is Maniac 4 Bricks, and I'm here today with set number 79116, Big Rig Snow Getaway from Nickelodeon's Ninja Turtles. This is based on the Michael Bay movie, the first one that came out, because they didn't have Lego sets for the second one, because that was Mega Bloks. Anyways, it's, this is ages 7 to 14, has 743 pieces, includes 6 minifigures, 3 on each end, which is actually pretty balanced for, you know, fighting with the minifigures in this set. And the set came out, I believe, in 2014, 2015. I'm just looking at the box off screen right now. Copyright 2014 Paramount. Okay, so about 2014. And if I remember correctly, I paid about $75 for this set at Toys R Us more recently. Um, I could be wrong about if that's the same price as it was in retail back in that time. But you can check the description if that's, you know, that'll be corrected down there. So for this review, I will mention some of the authenticity of the set compared to the movie, but to an extent. I somewhat remember the movie. I don't really care too much for the context of it or the movie itself. I'm not rating this set based on the movie appearance and saying, oh, this is a great movie because the set's good or whatever. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just looking at this as a toy and kind of relating, oh, this is what they did based on what was in the movie. So, as far as movie context, I believe this is in the second half of the movie where the turtles have more hyped up, souped up versions of themselves, which is involved with the lab that's actually included in the back of the truck. Um, all the things will be in there. And they basically have this rushing, you know, chase down a mountainside to, um, at least in the set, it looks like, you know, they're trying to get the truck away with all the mutagen and all that good stuff. Um, while the foot soldiers and Karai are taking it back. So, let's take a look at everything. We're going to move to the truck first. So we're going to move all the bad guys out of frame for quite a bit. And we'll take a look at the truck by itself. The truck is actually a pretty nice design. And one thing I'd like to remark on it right away is the color scheme. It is a bit bland, but it's just great to have a lot of dark gray parts in general. So I'm not really going to knock it for that. And it kind of has a bit of character with it. It not only has dark gray, but also has bits of light gray and a nice red stripe that continues from the front all the way through to the back. Gotta give it some credit for that because I could see where in here it could get a little bit messed up because the trailer is a separate attachment. But all through here, all the way around the entire thing, little plates here and there make it work. I also appreciate that for a truck build, it has all of these lights that are usually seen on the side of large freight trucks and trailers. So that's a good plus. And that's also shown on the other side of the vehicle as well. Um, it also has a stand here. So if you were to take the truck itself out of the picture and just have the trailer standing, it will actually stand up. The wheels on both parts of the truck and trailer do not move. Uh you know, on any sort of turning axis or anything, they're fixed on like so. And one of the mutagen contain containers just fell out, but all right, so we'll move that back on frame. It's actually pretty easy to hitch and unhitch. Um, it's actually a pretty nice build. I haven't had a lot of truck builds, but I've had a couple of surveillance trucks from Lego City Police. And personally, it's actually pretty good for what they did with this. The idea is, as, as in much larger sets in general, they have numbered bags. And for this one, it was one numbered bag that built the truck, one numbered bag that built most of the trailer, and then I think a separate bag that had this back portion. This was entirely so, uh, separate, like down the line, separate from the rest of the build, so that it's easier to find all the pieces and attach them into the proper space. And it has a play feature that doesn't really combine with this area, so it's nice to have the wall in between them. So now let's get right into the truck and look at some of the play features. So we can open it up on the top, and to get better hand access, we'll open up the sides. So in here, we have Leonardo, just at the little lab that's included in here. Again, I don't remember if in the movie, if they had, I think in the movie they had the lab in the truck, but I think they also had it before the scene even happened, like as its own facility, and the truck had some of the stuff contained but I don't think they did the operation in the truck itself. It might have been a little bit different from that. So 
I'm not really going to mark it again on its accuracy to the movie. Just trying to fill in a few gaps and let me know in the comments if I get any of that inaccuracy or accuracy wrong in the review. Now on the sides they have a bunch of clips where you can put some of the Ninja Turtles weapons. So you could fit two swords there if you didn't want to fit them on Leonardo. And on this side you can fit two Sai that belong to Raphael. I don't exactly know what this weapon is supposed to be, but you could just treat that as any regular laser guided gun. Um, I, I imagine that this would be the laser guided part because it's red, but it's still pretty good. Gotta fit this back in there. They just want to be shown as a play feature. So looking inside of here, well, actually we can look at it inside a little bit easier because outside of just showing it right here, we can actually take obviously the minifigure out, but we can also take out each of the components in here. They're put in by two by two or two by, yeah, two by two, uh, jumper plates and you can actually move this stuff around. So you could have a separate lab that's not in the truck itself if you want to use more space in the truck for other things. You could also take out this portion on the other side. Makes it easy to take a look at them up close. These are just small components that have a bit of research and lab development associated with them. One of them has a sticker and print attached to it, which actually does look very nice in general. So you can have that transformation of mutation 100%, from Turtle to Mutant Ninja Turtle. You also have a couple of items underneath it. Nice little binoculars from Star Wars. I, I hardly see those outside of the theme, so very cool to see it in here. This is some kind of high tech, and also some nice bottles on the top as well. You also have this little platform, which is some kind of crystal that's being analyzed, poked through, and you can actually use the magnifying glass to see it up close. You can take the magnifying glass off of there, of course. And that's it as far as the trailer itself for what's contained in there. Except for two things in the corner. I actually have a whole bunch of those that are loaded in the back, but they encourage that you can fit these in the trailer itself. These are your mutagen canisters. And you could actually throw these around, uh, you know, with the figures themselves. Or you can do, as they encourage in the set, drop them out the back of the truck itself. I don't know if they did this in the movie. I don't quite remember that part. But there is a switch on the other side. There's also a nice ladder there, and you can kind of see it poking out the back there. But there is a ladder on the other side, or a switch on the other side behind the ladder that allows you to shift all of these out of here. There's really not much to see from this back side. Kind of just mirrors the front side, but it's more solid. You can't open everything up from either. So you can just you know, turn this gear and it'll turn a couple Technic lift arms inside and it'll create a ramp so that you can drop your mutagen canisters out of there. There's actually three more that are in there. You can fit up to three at a time, maybe four if you're lucky, but for the most part, that's pretty much three of them. So you get five of them in the set, which just for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, you know, display building is actually pretty cool. So that way you could have some sort of research facility of some kind with all of these mutagen canisters. Now that we've already exhausted everything from the trailer, let's take a look back at the main truck. And this truck is actually pretty compact. It's actually pretty neat. And this is a truck, I don't know how well it's compatible with other LEGO City vehicles, but I'd say, yeah, try it out. So this is actually a pretty neat build. They have things like the gas containers down there, you got your steps up to the sides that you could actually hang minifigures from here and, you know, grab onto the sides and use them with weapons and such. Um, we can actually look at it better on the top by removing this. Now, this part is pretty solid, but I have problems every now and then with trying to apply it. See, it'll, it'll hit some of the back a little bit better than the front, mainly it's because the plates on the front there. So, sometimes I need to, or just take the whole thing with it. So sometimes I try to go with the front first and then the back so that it'll attach properly. It's a little demeanor, but there it is. It actually does look pretty good from the front. Nice, you know, rig look on there. And this is one of the types of trucks that really doesn't have a, you know, seating area for two that goes horizontally, but rather vertically. So this one actually has room for two figures in this way where you can kind of have like a back seat for one. April, you, what are you doing with a phone in your hand? You shouldn't be texting and driving. 
Well, luckily she's not right into the steering wheel as I could have put her because that would have been dangerous to have a phone while driving. But you can still actually fit the figure a little bit closer up to the steering wheel. You see the space there and also give you space for the turtle at the back. Probably fit the weapons in there too. I did fit him with size in there and maybe Leonardo could fit in there, but it might be a little dicey. So let's take a break now. We'll look at some of the figures. So now we'll take a look at the villain's vehicle. This looks like some kind of like compact van of some sort. And actually does have a pretty nice look to it. I posted it on Instagram a little while before reviewing this that uh, while building it, I actually kept this back portion from being complete. And the reason for that was because I kind of thought, hey, this could actually look like a cool big pickup truck if you really wanted it to. If you take out a bit of the stuff in the back, you could make a flat bed. So <laughs> that's just an added thing outside of the set that maybe you could do with it if you weren't interested in Mutant Ninja Turtles and just wanted to use the parts for very cool vehicles. So, um, when, and obviously you have a lot of stickers on these vehicles, so you could have easily taken the stickers out of the equation for the the van that we talked about earlier and just made it as its own, you know, shipping van or some kind of that thing like that. Even all the parts in between there. So, taking a look at this, looks pretty nice. It's got a lot of rounded edges, and that's pretty interesting for a vehicle like this, I would think maybe it's a little too rounded for like a realistic vehicle, but it does seem pretty nice and got a lot of nice shape to it all the way around for just a toy. I do like these pieces that are used around for the wheel wells because it just adds more creativity to them. Uh, I haven't really seen that a, lo a lot of vehicles do that in LEGO, at least in sets. And that's a pretty cool little look there. Uh, you do have some flick fires obviously on the front, so weaponry is of course part of the vehicle's design and um it also has some nice shaping along here not exactly like you know cutting off at some points you know there but i guess it gives it a little bit more character because of the red that goes along with some of the other parts like red here red in the driver's seat red along the back and it looks like we even have that a little bit open on the back you can actually see somebody seated in there so and also interestingly enough the license plate sticker that's on the back here is a larger one of the one on the front although it's the same number it's pretty interesting that you know they're not quite lined up just in my opinion but you also have another nice sticker there and um there is actually a bigger play feature for this set than just rolling it around so you can actually open up the sides to this and you'll reveal a nice large flick fire launcher yep that's all that it really does and you can elevate this upward, you can even move it a, a little bit forward, a little bit back, and get some, you know, angles with it, and try to fire with it. It's, you know, it's a glorified what the front does, but you get a little bit more, you know, playability with it because of the, you know, those little lift arm pieces. Um, and you also have the nice sticker in there for a target, so that's pretty cool for Karai. Now she does have her weapon, I put it in the front with the weapon for the foot soldier, and he does have a bit of room in there, not only for himself, but also for a few other details. Mainly just the steering wheel, but still, I do appreciate the space that's in there. It's a little bit more bulky vehicle than what you would find in a LEGO City setting, but I think it's still kind of proper. Maybe it's just a bit taller, if anything. And there have been tall trucks before in real life so i think this is okay again if you want to take out the whole back part and make it into some other more realistic truck and maybe even take off the flick fire missiles on the sides and maybe replace those with actual uh rear view mirrors i mean the truck had them why isn't this one that's because it's flick fired flick fire rear view mirrors yeah that's gonna help when you're driving so anyways um it's a cool looking truck, but like I said, if you want to take out the back part, you can pretty easily and make it into a flatbed truck. It doesn't take a lot of parts to take out of there. Maybe you can make the top portion of it as a cab so that you can, you know, store stuff inside and it won't be, you know, taken over by weather, you know, like keep it contained. I don't know, whatever you want to do. But I actually do appreciate that you can fit Karai in here sitting down. She doesn't really fit in here standing up or with a weapon in her hand. This is probably the best way that you can fit her inside of there. And yeah, it does look 
Took, does look a little bit odd for having each of these figures with the weapons while they're trying to drive. Again, don't drive with your hands distracted. You gotta keep your hands on the wheel. But, uh, it's still a pretty well-built car. Lots of nice pieces that are used, good angles, and just, you know, good design. So now we'll take a look at all of our good guys. We have from left to right, Raphael, Leonardo, and April O'Neil, as portrayed by, um... I want to say Michael J. Fox, but I know that's completely wrong. Megan Fox. <laughs> that's, that's, that's ten ways wrong. So, anyways, these are different types of turtles than we've seen in the animated Nickelodeon TV show. And even more different than the ones we're used to from the 80s and 90s versions of the TV show and so on. Even different from earlier CGI movies of these characters. This one goes for a lot more gritty and kind of realistic and taller turtle look, especially with those larger shell pieces and, you know, more sophisticated faces and ornate printing on the print on the uh, torso and legs. What I do like is all the little colors that they put in for all those little details. I'm not really sure if I can make sense of all those details, though. I mean, there's a lot that's shown in here on the torso, and it's... It's giving almost too much to look at at one point. You kind of need to break it up a little bit so you can appreciate one by one each element of it. What I also find interesting is that for the turtle torsos, they actually have part of the bandanas laced down, you know, towards their shoulders. Even though on the minifigures themselves, it's just kind of, you know, strapped back there. Um, so, a little bit inconsistent on that part. I do understand, yes, it's a big bandana, but... You're really not going to get that uh, feel for it when you're looking at just the heads without the... Uh... Like, with the shells on, I guess you can get that sense. But if you take the shells off, not really. Um, as far as April O'Neil, I think it's actually a great character to use just as a plain licensed character. You don't even have to associate her directly with April O'Neil. You could change around parts of her and I think it'll work out pretty well. The hair is actually a very nice color for that type of piece, which I know very rarely comes up in Lego sets in general in any color. Um, so it's a nice one to get nonetheless. It's nice to get it in that reddish color. Um, and I think the torso is actually a pretty nice print. Again, just for like a, a basic licensed character. It doesn't have to have a specific name, but just builds more of the world if you want it to. Um, and I also find it interesting that for Leonardo, he has that little pack on the back so he can hold his swords. It gives him, you know, that ability so that he can put other things on his hands and hold the swords back there. No other turtles have that ability. They don't really work the same way fitting into their rack piece. And what I also find a little bit bad about it is the fact that it stretches out so far from the back of the body. If you're trying to put Leonardo into a tight area, this would be your problem. And as far as back print on any of the figures, um, not really that much on, I think there's some on the turtles, but I'll just move these off and give you a better look at them. And for April O'Neil, we do have an alternate face on her. It's a little bit different from the one she has on the front, mainly just showing more of her teeth and being more gritty with her eyebrows. Um, but not too bad. As far as the turtles, it's actually really simple on the back of their prints. Just like the ones in the, in the Nickelodeon series, they have the print of the shells there, as if you just wanted to have them all for the figures. But I don't know. You can let me know what you guys think about this as well in the comments below. So now we'll take a look at Karai, who is in the center, and the foot soldiers on the sides. Honestly, I'm not really a fan of the foot soldiers that are in this set and in this movie-based theme. I mean, they are accurate to the movie, but compared to the TV show and everything we've known up to this point, it's a little too realistic. It kind of has more of a military feel to me, and much more brooding, and not really that, you know, turtles-friendly, in my opinion. I do like how Karai looks... For the most part, it actually looks pretty good. I 
kind of like that little red highlight that's put into her hair on the front. And the scarf on her is alright. I think the scarf actually matches better with the rest of the uh, foot soldiers. But still cool to get these figures in a set of, uh, you know, we've already had three uh, heroes. So we have three villains. So like I said in the beginning, it's nicely balanced. Now we do have an alternate face for Karai. I'll just move this around and put it on the front. Then you can see it a little bit better. The cheekbones are a little bit blocked, but it still looks pretty good. So now we're back with everything in frame for my wrap-up thoughts. This is actually a pretty good set considering the price for it. I think it has a good number of figures to make it fun and playable. It has a lot of different features inside of the truck that you can easily remove, play around with, whether with the truck or without it. And it also has uh, very cool play features for it. I don't think any other LEGO sets I've seen more recently have had things such as the dropout section from the back of the truck or this pop-out section in the back of the SUV. Or at least I'm going to call it that for now because I'm not really sure which type of vehicle it is. I also like how the front has two uh, seating for at least two figures, maybe three if you fit just the regular minifigures in there instead of having turtles with the big shells on them. Uh, that is a little bit of a disclaimer, or a little bit of a, what's the word? A con of it, <laughs> not make it any fancier, um, that the shells are kind of big, and especially for Leonardo, takes up a lot more space when you're trying to put them into smaller areas, especially when I put them in the, in the van earlier, um, and just a little bit, you know, off with how the truck looks. I mean, it's still good rounded, but it's almost, you know, like you have like this ridge on here, it's not great. Yeah, you know, just leading into there. I guess it makes it easier for opening it up, if anything. Um, and it doesn't really have headlights or, I mean, not headlights. Rear view mirrors, the way that the truck does, but that's really not a big deal. It's a good little set to get. And uh, it's actually one of the more, I think it's one of the bigger sets that came from this movie-based theme. So that was actually pretty cool to build and cool to play with. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this set with or without movie regard. I'm okay either way. I'm sure a lot of you are not really fans of the movie. I've heard in general people don't really like the Michael Bay versions of movies. Uh, in general, not just Ninja, Ninja Turtles, but even Transformers and blah, blah, blah. But uh, we'll just talk about the set by itself. And um, if you want to hear more about my thoughts of the set without context to the movie... I would like to do a video at some later point that just goes with Lego Out of Context. It's a series that will come up on the channel at some point in the future where I'm just going to talk about the set without referring to the movie authenticity. I know I kept it out for the most part in this movie, in this review, but I did mention a couple things here and there like, yes, it makes sense for the lab being in the set. Yes, it makes sense for all the vehicles and figures that are associated with it. Yes, they look accurate to the movie and so on. So we're going to take all that stuff out of there if you want to see a shorter, more concise review. Well, you've already sat through this one. So I will take a look at it if you just want to buy the set for a truck, van, and a couple of anthropomorphic turtles. So we'll see you later with more videos. And you can also check out more Teen Tween Ninja Turtles on my channel, as well as other superheroes in general. They're on a playlist with superheroes. I don't know if TMNT has its own playlist right now, but I could figure that out a little bit later.